Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. On this episode, LA drummer and director of performance programs at Musicians Institute, Stuart Gene. And now, Rich Redman. What is up, rock and rollers? Another episode of The Rich Redmond Show coming to you from two cities today, sunny Los Angeles. Our guest is coming from sunny Los Angeles, from Van Nuys, Van Nuys, uh, California, and Jim, South 65, south of Nashville. Jim, you know, I always say, you know, what's up, rock and rollers? But really, there's so many people in our audience, they could be they could be just hardcore jazzers. They could be uh, mamas and the papas folkies. They can just listen to like 90s country and just be rocking all day to like Tracy Bird and Alan Jackson. But I assume most of you guys are rock and rollers and you you pray to the Mount Rushmore of rock and rollers that I consider to be the the bands, the who, the Stones, the Beatles, and the Led Zeppelin. <laughs> But anyways, this is going to be a great episode. Jim, I'm telling you, a uh, dear friend of mine uh, is on the show today. He's been teaching at Musicians Institute for 16 years. He worked his way all the way up to where he is now the director of performance program at uh, all the programs at the world famous Musicians Institute, Hollywood, California, since 1977. World-class drummer, friend of mine. Stuart Jean, how are you, buddy? Oh my gosh, what an introduction. Rich, I'm great. How are you? Yeah, man. Wow, good I'm happy to be here, man. It's good to see you. I was saying that I've seen you probably more in the last seven months than my dear co-host and friend there, Jim McCarthy, who I've known for 13 years, because you and I are in a pod of like, we're in a COVID pod. We <laughs> yes, get we to are. see each other a couple times a month, a couple times a month, break bread. Yep. Have a little wine, maybe. Wine know. or whiskey. You guys have a great uh, wine collection. You really do. We like our wine, me and Allison, my wife. Yeah, yes. We like wine. We go up to Paso Robles a lot and uh, do some wine tasting and all we that. Do the, so. uh, the box wine, the $20 box wine from Kroger. Man, you got to love it. There's nothing wrong with box wine, man. It's know. a bad <laughs> rap. You know, I will steer away. I know people love the two buck Chuck, uh, the Charles Shaw yeah. at Trader Joe's, but I got to draw the line there. I just can't go. That's the hangover waiting to happen. Well, know? isn't it like four bucks now? I think oh, it's I don't know. with it inflation. Yeah, it might rhymes. be. See, that's when I first moved to town, I was buying a two buck Chuck and maybe it's the four buck Chuck now. I don't know. So. so, but you're hailing from the great state of New Jersey, right? I'm originally from New Jersey, South Jersey. I know people like to say what exit. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> you know. Garden State or Turnpike? Yeah, uh, you know, I'm off the 95. You know, right the there. 95. <laughs> yeah, the 95. Yeah, the 95. You know, and uh, moved uh, to Miami when I was 18 to go to college at University of Miami. Great school. Uh, yeah. So, um, but yeah, New Jersey's great. I grew up outside of Philadelphia. You could see the skyline from my house, and yes, you can probably hear it in my voice as well. So, yeah, man, the Rocky <laughs> thing. You know, that's such, it was such a kind of near and dear movie to my heart. So inspirational. It's one of those movies like Shawshank Redemption or Papillon or Alien, where if it's on, doesn't matter. I'm watching it. I, I will blow off my plans to sit there and watch that thing all the way through. I'm sure you've been to the spot, right? Climb the steps oh. and all that. I've ran up those steps. I've have you? I've done it, man. I got to do it. Yeah, you got to do it. You have you? Do have I told you uh, Spencer's latest movie obsession, Rich? Jim's son, Spence. What's he watching now? He uh, he goes to these little obsession obsessive periods, and yeah. the latest thing is uh, The Shining. <sighs> Great movie. You can't unsee movies. that. No, you cannot it's unsee like, that uh, movie. You know, yeah, that's a classic. What's, what's, one. The, what's the movie that they filmed in down south with the dueling banjos? Oh, Deliverance! Uh, Deliverance! Yeah. Deliverance. I like that's a movie mouth. you cannot unsee. No, that's a tough yeah. one. The first time you see that Ned Beatty scene. You just like, yeah. <laughs> like why were you guys rafting down the, to Aintree? Why? They told In you your not underwear. to. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. No, th- there's some truth to that. You know, I mean, because, you know, being someone who has been based in Nashville forever, when you start going out with a baby act, you know, where the drums are in the bay of the bus and the person that's running your lights and doing your monitors is also the merchandise guy, you go visit some serious, like, county fairs and you play things like the Ham and Yam Festival and the Seafood <laughs> Festival, and it's all in, like, middle, middle, middle America. And there are some people out there that have experienced so much inbreeding that their skin is blue. They call them the blue people. And I saw really? them. Yeah. Oh in the Virginias. Goodness. In the Virginias. Never heard of that. Yeah. That was, uh, I'll steal from Bill Hicks, one of my favorite comedians. Uh, rest in peace. Uh, he says the gene pool is so thin that the left, uh, the eyes are so close together that the left <laughs> eye is in the right socket and the right eye is in the Left soccer, whatever you know. <laughs> you kept telling me to check out Bill Hicks. Like that, that, that. What's the what's the one concert special that you recommend from him? Uh, he's got some in there's a I forget what it's called, but him in London is a really good one. It's not live in London, but he is in London, and it's a good one. But pretty much anything on YouTube, you know. But I would recommend anything. Don't watch clips of Bill Hicks. You have to watch an entire set. You know, way he kind of really like, kind of get because he could be very controversial, come across as really angry or so, and then he can be super lighthearted. So he was a perfect timing. You know, he was like George Carlin, like had the timing down. Yeah, and he grew up in that Kinnison, that preacher, Southern preacher kind of thing. You know, but he's kind he he really touched on all bases and was awesome. Loved music. Love even played guitar. There, he even has a you know played guitar on some of his uh, uh CDs that he put out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he he was a big influence for me, definitely. Did you did you ever have the I you know this uh, fantasy of getting up there with a microphone and being a stand up comedian? Because we're always hiding behind a set of drums. Yeah, I mean, I could never do it. I like to steal from comedians and let people know I'm stealing. Like if like if I think of something they and it's relevant to the conversation, I'll throw it in there. And I'll, but I give the credit. There's no way I could stand in a room of people on. Sunset Strip, you know, the improv and just lay it out like that. The, to me, stand-up comedians are geniuses. There's no, yes. I don't know how they do it, man. Well, you I know you're going to bomb and that's a realization and you know you're going to have to work through that and you're probably going to bomb for some time. We just had, as a Southern comedian on, John Reap and he was talking like, well, you know, if you got a seven minute slot and they're all, sometimes they're only laughing for 30 seconds of that, oh. you know, you got to get to the point where it's all seven minutes are threading together. And then the next step is if you can get 15 together and then maybe comedy central will give you a special. If you can pull like 22 minutes together. Yeah. that's right. <laughs> Forget it. I'm happy back here behind the drums. Man. Yeah. It's like, as long as we learn a two, a two beat shuffle, a Lindy beat, uh, maybe a halftime shuffle, or maybe a, a cha cha, we're going to be mm-hmm. in business. We're all good. A bossa nova gets us a long way. A long know, way. It's, it's all good. And I like you. When you talk to students, and I've had you at the school many times, and you're involved yeah. with us. And, yes, thank uh, we'll, you. We'll get, yeah. Uh, you always do a great job of telling students, like, you know, whether you're, you know, because you are, you're a rock star. You're, you are Richard Edmonds playing, like, to the back <laughs> guy in the back of the room of that Dallas Cowboys stadium, you know, and you, you got to make it visual for them, but you also have that same energy when you're playing in a hotel lobby, playing a bossa Nova for three hours, you play it with intensity, you know, and I tell the students, you have to, you have to, you can't, be along for the ride as a drummer you're providing the energy for the whole entire thing whether it's you know a quiet little set little Nora Jones brushes kind of thing cajon yeah. or you're rocking playing you know double bass drum and, and yeah. playing a hundred thousand people in Rio, you know, that's some, uh, that's some kind of, that's that commitment. And, you know, I mean, you kind of speak to commitment for sure. I mean, look, I'm looking at these people that you've performed with over the years, folks like uh, Bruce Kulick and Don Felder, Jimmy Buffett, Betty Wright, Sam Moore, Bo Diddley. Everyone's got a, a Bo Diddley story, tons of, uh, of Disney artists. And so you're bringing all this professional experience. Like you're not a, um, you know, syllabus touting, uh, elbow patch jacket wearing guy you're bringing all this smoking perf- <laughs> you're, yeah. you know what the pipe looks more yeah, well, let's agree. talk about that i've you know because i do cigars and i think the next step is like a bilbo baggins kind of like a um a, yeah, a, I'm a, a talk down with the line together and, uh, 
but you're bringing all of that experience to your students and that's kind of like speaks to like the model of uh, of a musician's institute that i guess goes back to 77 where you had like git and pit and bit and vit and now it's just musicians institute and you guys aren't just teaching drums i mean you guys are teaching like Pro Tools engineering, music mastering, DJing, composition, songwriting. So if there's some anything you want to accomplish in the in the industry, you can come to there right there, Hollywood and Highland, the heart of Hollywood, and and get a real education. Yeah, absolutely, man. Like you said, it. Wow. Um, when I first started working there, I mean, yeah, this school has an amazing history. 77, 78, it was across the street on the boulevard guitar school great guitar players you know and it attracted people and back then it was more of i'd say like a finishing school where a lot of guys came in already had some good chops and they just wanted to meet these masters and kind of polish their playing and network and all that and then yeah 1980 uh pit started uh you know ralph and joe uh started that thing and then uh, it evolved over the years, moved, moved across the street, expanded with uh, yeah, keyboard, vocal. We just started a horn program uh, this quarter. Nice. Uh, you know, DJ stuff. Uh, the audio engineering is off, uh, off the chain, you know. And when I first started working there, it was uh, really about playing. You know, and yeah, I, I, when I first started teaching there, I was teaching drummers, uh, theory, ear training, yeah. piano, stuff they didn't really want to learn in their first quarter. But I, I learned, and I had to learn fast of like how to sell this to drummers, you know, and I knew, hmm. I, you know, I, I knew how to do it, but it took some time because that was a tough audience. Got kids coming in wearing tool t shirts, wanting to be the next, you know, Danny Carey yeah. and, and, and all that. Marco Minimum, guys like that, you know, and I'm like, here's major scale, you know. So, yeah, they got to uh, have yeah. it. I mean, I mean, at least it's practical because I remember, I don't know if you remember, like when you're in Miami, it may have been more practical because there's a very commercial slant to Miami. Um, mm. But when you're like in a traditional college music program, they call it sight screaming and you're doing yeah. all the soul fetch of classical pieces. And then you have to learn figured bass and all this kind of stuff, which doesn't seem like it has, you know, uh, practicality built into it. Well, because drummers aren't applying that on this instrument, but they sure. are because they're playing with people that are using using that. And the more you can relate to music as a drummer, obviously, the more you're going to work and you're sensitive yeah. to what's going on. And why not write your own music? I mean, if a, if a, you know ha if all the students at the school or melodic instrumentalists can can write music, why can't a drummer write music too? And I always tell them I push them towards the video gaming because that is so huge right now. Oh, and composing for video games? Yeah, and you can write like crazy <clears throat> stuff, you know. So yeah. I tell them like go that route. And J.R. Robinson did a clinic at the school years ago, and he said you got ten fingers. That's ten irons in the fire. And you're the same kind of guy. You're you're that model too. Like you got to have publishing going on. You got to be writing songs. You're working on acting. You know, like get that together. It's only going to help you as a drummer, as an artist. You know, the law of diffusion. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. Jim's got a million revenue streams as well. You know, and it's just mm -hmm. we, we're always talking about that. School like MI, I think I can really help move something like that. Look at the Rick Murata. I mean, Rick Murata was a, you know, and still is an amazing drummer. Um, you know, he had this strong heyday um, recording and touring with people like um, James Taylor and, uh, you know, you're so vain, Carly Simon, a lot of Linda Ronstadt. But then he goes and he writes the theme to Everybody Loves Raymond, and he has a house in Martha's Vineyard, <laughs> one of many houses, right? So yeah. there you go. Of theme. Um, Everybody Loves Raymond. It's all super piano heavy and jazz brushes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Da -da -ba -da -da. Now he you gets know, paid, even though they they might rerun that show. He still gets paid, right? Every time that thing is running somewhere, or there's a new syndication outlet, that guy <clears throat> is getting paid. So you know, as an actor, if you can land a job on a syndicated sitcom, amazing thing. And if you're a composer and you can get one of your pieces, intellectual property, on one of those shows that runs forever, you are golden. That's yeah, ching. Look that at is that, it, baby. Mailbox money. That know? is that right there. Um, and, and I got to thank you, man, publicly. I do appreciate it. You know, we are trying to place a timeline on when you and I connected and we can't, we can't seem to remember if it's 2010 or 2012. Um, but, uh, right around then we came into each other's lives and you championed me and you had, you had me teach like two clinics a year at the, at MI and I love seeing the kids. And sometimes there's these, you know, every 
two years or so, the, ch- the faces are changing mm-hmm. and I get these emails from the kids that are like, hey, I got a gig. I'm a drum tech now. You know, I moved to such and such. I'm doing this. It's like so inspiring. And that's awesome. And, you know, you're a great example to bring in because you have that energy and the students need that. They constantly have to be motivated. You know, when, it's, when you're 20 years old and you made this commitment and you're – you're going to have apprehension. You're going to have a bad day. I tell them like, you're going to have a day where maybe you were prepared. You thought you were prepared and you know, you're grinding and just something just didn't go so great. You know, I had a great story where a student one day, he was a year, year into the program, military vet, uh, and doing great, working hard. And it's like the second week of the new quarter. And I come walking through the passageway and here, I forget his name. He was sitting there and he's like on the verge of tears and just looked horrible. Oh, and yeah. I sat down. I'm like, what's going on, man? And he's like, I'm packing up a truck. I'm going back to Arizona. That's it. I'm out of here. I'm like, what happened? What's going on? What do you mean? And he goes, I messed up this Rage Against the Machine song last night. <laughs> and I went, hold on, hold on, hold on. I said, hold on. I'm going to, uh, and I told him, I said, I'm going to be kind of a dick right now. Okay. I said, <laughs> Oh my God, the world's going to end because you messed up a song. Come on, man. I said, you're going to chase your dreams and let messing up one song make you pack it all in. Come on, dude. You got to pick it up. We've all been there. I've been embarrassed on gigs, on sessions. I've screwed things up. I mean, I, you know, there's times I thought about putting these away, but no way, man. I am in this. We're in this. We're a fraternity. We're drumming brothers. We're all here to help each other. Yeah. Get it off your chest, but don't go irrational. You know, you got to find that balance of pushing yourself hard, but not beating yourself up. You know, there's that book by Kenny Werner, Effortless Mastery. Yes. Uh, and the main thing I got from that book was you got to be kind to yourself. You know, you can't lie to yourself. You have to be doing the work. You have to, you know, you have to have that clear conscious, like I'm doing everything I possibly can. And maybe things still aren't still happening. But if you work hard, I tell students, if you work hard, it'll happen. You know, you're a perfect example of that, you know, you, and you've got to maintain that work ethic. You know, yes. you have to maintain. So it's tough. There, but there was a, a guy like you. In, yeah, but I, there was a revolution, a revelation that I had in the car business when I did a stint there mm. uh, from 13 to 15 or so. Mm. Uh, it was a rough business. And that's one of the things I actually mm. teach. I was actually going to ask, do they offer business courses and like selling courses and stuff like that at where you work? Not like, necessarily uh, selling, but marketing yourself, branding yourself, you know. Right. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you what, what we know, we didn't used to do that. Uh, we right. did a big program rewrite 2014. School was great. The school had great curriculum, great teachers, but over the years, everything started to get a little disjointed. And yes, yeah, students are learning how to play drums, doing great. I'm scrolling through Facebook seeing, you know, let's go back about five, six, seven, eight years ago or whatever. And I'm scrolling through Facebook seeing students that graduated doing killer gigs. Dude, I'm jealous. I'm going, man, these guys are playing some great rooms and great artists. This is great. So I hit them all up like, hey, now looking back, what, where did we, what did we miss? You know, where are the holes? So we can, we're always trying to evolve our curriculum and and stay relevant. And it was great to see like, well, what, what, what do we screw up? You know, Where, where do we need to fix something? And every single one of them, they all had the same response. You totally prepared me to play drums for any gig. I'm doing great. But I knew nothing about the business. And my right. defensive answer was, well, you know, we had we had electives that you could have taken, music business basics, music law, things like that, independent artist marketing. But, of course, they're going to take double bass drum workout. They're going to take odd time. They're going to take all that New Orleans drumming. Yeah. So we, when we rewrote the curriculum, we had to figure out a balance of we have to eliminate some stuff and make that stuff elective, maybe some cool drum courses or something, but we have to replace some of that with some real world, like the business Business savviness. It has to be core. It's a shame for someone, you know, I've heard a lot of artists, uh, Mark Shulman, your buddy, uh, say, you know, the worst thing that can happen is a missed opportunity, opportunity, you know, and not understanding, you know, and it's not just about telling students like, how to how to ask for money for a gig or something like that like that's a common question like this band wants me on the road what do i ask for and that's all over the scale you know and you have to kind of it's more about getting the savviness of smelling that out and knowing hey there's money here i can i can definitely ask for this where there's (laughs) there's nothing here and i still want to do it because it'll be good for me you know so that's one of the things that i coach creatives on especially those in the voiceover business which is a majority of what i do Mm. is how to sell themselves 
yeah. you know, and how to find <clears throat> and, and strategically sniff out what those rates are going to be. And that's, you know, I don't find that, you know, let alone even in where you are in the creative circles, it's definitely lacking, but in general education, yeah, you know, my yeah. kids aren't learning about any of that stuff, <laughs> except hard. for me, you know, well, there you go. Well, what I was going to say before when I was in the car business was, uh, you know, getting back to how you had the one student that was about to bounce because of a rage song. Mm -hmm. I actually said, you know, I made me think of this particular moment because I remember just that business is one of the best educations you can ever get. You know, I, I tell people all the time, if you don't know what you want to do, they say, go serve tables or whatever. I'm like, go sell cars. Yeah. Cause that'll teach you a lot. I think everyone and, should be a waiter at some point, just so you don't cheap out on the tips. Well, there's that. I mean, you know, but I, I, for, for a business savviness, sure, you know, and, and understanding that kind of sellability for somebody, go just grind out. Even if you hate it, just go do it. It'll yep. teach you so much. Yep. But one of the guys came in, one of my uh, uh, guys that I looked up to, he comes in one day and I was having one of those days where deals were unwinding. I mean, fires were popping up left and right. Yeah. And he looked at me, he's like, man, what's, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I've just got this and this and this. And he looks me square in the eye and he goes, Man, it's always something. Yeah, just make peace with and that. And that just hung with me. And I'm going, man, you are so right. And as soon as you realize that, it just feels better. Yep. <laughs> it's like an energy releases out to the universe. You're like, yeah, you're right. As soon as yeah, I realize that, it just... It is. It's just what it is. Deal There's always it. something. There's always something. I mean, Stuart, you went from running the drum program to having to deal to be essentially running every instrument. Bass, Almost, guitar, yeah. keys, you know, I mean, that's a lot of responsibility. It's a whole lot more emails. There's that expectation of having, you know, people having their emails returned and super quickly. I mean, it's just more responsibility. Um, you know, it makes me kind of think about this time in human history, like this has never happened before, at least in our lifetime. And, you know, this is a situation where people are they're complaining about lack of income or this the universe did this thing to me. But are, are they turning over stones? Are they shaking trees? I guarantee that if you shake your network up a little bit and you just reach out to say hi to people, these opportunities, these little light bulb moments can go off in your head like, oh, I, I should – create something with that person or create something with that person. And I don't need to be in person in the same room, breathing the same air at the same time to accomplish that. You're totally well, right. I mean, the, the, the definite truth is, is that I think we're, you know, coming out of a peacetime economy into a wartime economy. So that's something to really hammer down on. Mm. Explain Jim. these days. Well, I mean, with everything that's going on, I think yeah. that uh, economically we're seeing for a little bit of a rocky road. Yeah. yeah Cause we, we've been in the peacetime economy for the past decade. Yeah. Over a decade, 12 years. Interesting time. Interesting time, man. Well, wait, what's that's up? good. I mean, there's, yeah. there's, there's opportunity to be found in a wartime economy. There's always opportunity. It's got, like you're saying, you got to look for it. Yeah. You're totally right. You got to look for it and you can't sit idle. I think a lot of people went into COVID in the beginning thinking, oh, I'll just ride this out, you know, and they kind of put their life on pause a little bit. And a lot of our students are having, you know, our, our potential students are having a hard time making that decision of, do I, do I wait until this all ends? You know, do I want to study online? Does it work? And I can say, at least with uh, MI, like we got it, we got our game going on as far, mm -hmm. as, far as the uh, teaching online. And I try to encourage people like, listen, try it. Maybe don't take a full program, take a few classes, but you have to stay productive and keep moving forward. You know, I didn't have this set up in my back garage until COVID happened. I'm like, okay, <laughs> it finally pushed me, you know, to, to get this going on, you know, and I have to be able to teach. And now I'm set and all the instructors, same thing, guitar instructors, you know, in the beginning, we're all going through zoom and figuring out zoom and, and then the methodology, of trying to teach people like this, you know, is different, you know, but in, the, in some ways it's better, really, you know. Yeah. Well, the expectations usually are more concrete, you know. I mean, I miss just popping into a practice room. You'd have me out to MI to do open counseling where you're kind of like, you know, you're just teaching one on lessons with kids or kids can come out, 10 kids can come out and ask you about the music business and stuff. Oh, I miss hugging people. Oh, it's going to oh, be yeah. so amazing. But um, you have me designing an online course uh, called Reading 3 that I'm going to be um, teaching January, February, March. Um, so I'm excited about that. And I put in some serious time this week. And now I got to put it into the computer. So, you know, learning, growing, and changing. If, if you had told me like 
three years ago that I'd be learning a, learning a learning management system. I would have been, you're crazy. I'm not doing that. But we're doing it and we're having a great time, you know. So we just uh, don't be afraid to grow, change, and evolve. No, you're crushing it. And yeah, let's, uh, that's a good segue to say, yes, Rich, you are now full faculty at MI. So Crazy. congratulations and thank you. Thank you. You're and hey, and your birthday is Thursday. And since I'm quarantining to go to a holiday function, I'm not going to be able to, but we're going to do it afterwards big time. Of course we are. We'll make up for that. <laughs> <laughs> and if you come to Nashville, you have to see Jim's setup. He's got the fire pit. He's got the jug of wine. It's, uh, wow. yeah, we have a good time out there. I thought it was yeah. a box of wine. Oh, yeah, box of wine. It is the box of wine. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Maybe even uh, take, take a seat next to the gauntlet right there. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Look at his multi-camera setup there. That is yeah. just too that is really impressive. Yeah. So, so Stu, now if there's a listener out there and they're a parent or they're a student and they want, they're interested in their kids getting into the school or they, no matter what season of their life, they want to go into this uh, great program, Musicians Institute, what's the best way to, uh, to, to uh, contact you? Uh, you can email me directly, Stuart J at mi.edu, S T E W A R T, letter J at mi.edu. Or you can go to the MI website, uh, www.mi.edu, ask for a missions rep uh, that can uh, contact with you, get yeah. con connected with you, yeah. and talk about financial aid and housing. Now, right now, obviously, anyone that's interested, we're 100% teaching everything online, but the campus is open for students to use. The facilities so we have a little bit of a hybrid but none no instruction on on campus just yet but clearly as things open up uh, we'll, we'll get back there again you know. so the drum set rooms are not assigned you have to sign up to get into them like hourly or whatever right yeah now normally you know pre-covid and you know decades for decades uh that building 24 7 access to uh, a drum set. So, you know, the one, the greatest thing is like, when I talk to prospects, I asked everyone in the room, you know, who in here has an ideal drumming practice situation? And of course, no one raises their hand because all of us have struggled with like, I'm bugging my neighbors or I got to pay for a lockout or I'm sharing it and I can't get in there all the time. Am I 24 seven, your own kit, you're never bothering anyone. So I'm constantly like, you know, like no one has an excuse. Like I couldn't practice, you know, unless there's a physical injury, you know. Um, so now, right now with COVID, yeah, it's a sign up situation. There's enough rooms where you pretty much sign up and you get it all day, but we're not, it's not 24 seven right now. We're a little limited on that, but the students are getting, you know, it's been great because it wasn't open. The campus wasn't open the past two quarters, spring and summer, but for the fall quarter here, uh, it's back open and everyone's worked really hard, facilities and all the admin to make that happen. And I got to praise the students and the faculty for just hanging in there, kicking butt, uh, you know, just getting through this and just knowing we're all in this, we're all dealing with it on whatever level and it's just making us all closer and it's really making our school better. Really, you know, we're going to take elements of this online thing and keep them once we, you know, when you're teaching your reading class, if you're teaching it on campus at some point, you know, you might have elements of, uh, you know, the on the, on the online build that you're, uh, you know, maybe students are uploading videos of them playing, but then you're seeing them live as well, you know, so nice. a great, great hybrid, you know, so. For sure. Now, yeah. I'm familiar with all your teachers, but for the listeners, uh, who are all your teachers there? Okay, uh, so let's start with, uh, we got Rick Latham, you yeah. know, come on, he's got the most uh, advanced funk studies, that book that we've all studied out of, I think it's celebrating 40 years this Crazy. year, and Rick is ha handles our private lessons, he handles live performance workshops, our studio classes, and he's super cool, groovy guy, and such a nice guy. Uh, I got to mention Fred Dinkins. Fred Dinkins, to me, is our thread to the beginning of PIT. Uh, you know, he's our connection to Joe Percaro. He was a student there. And uh, Fred, wow. has a, Fred has a great audio uh, recording of in, uh, in a private lesson room at MI, Jeff Picaro breaking down Rosanna. I mean, we, there's other videos out there, but Fred wow. has an audio of, of Jeff right there, you know. So we got that legacy of Fred. 
Fred is a mentor for all of us at the school. He's, uh, he's just the voice of reason. He's such a great guy. He's so warm. He really cares about the students. Uh, he gets so excited when a student you know, thinks he couldn't get something, and then he gets it. I mean, Fred just he lives for it, and it's awesome. I don't know what I would do without him. There. I love Fred. I got to do something yeah. outside of the school with Fred because every time I come in, he's there. He's got a big smile on his face and a firm handshake, and he plays with Sinbad, who mm. I saw at Zany's last year, and it was great. And he didn't even – Sinbad, he did not have an act. He literally came out and just started riffing with everybody in the front row. That was wow. his show. Wow. It was great. He didn't miss a beat. That's a pro for you right there, man. Totally. Who else? Who else, man? Uh, Tim McIntyre, another yeah. guy that's been there for quite some time, teaches a lot of our jazz classes, super uh, you know, intense teacher, great guy, great player, very invested in what's going on with the students. Uh, Kevin Stevens, you know, a super happening drummer out here in L.A., yeah. he's got his own businesses. I don't know if you've been seeing the T-shirts on Facebook and Instagram, but it's like uh, uh, it'll say Blakey, Philly Joe, uh, Elvin, Tony. Oh, and that's his Anita. company? Yeah, Grits and Gravy. That's, that's oh, You know, Kevin. because he's, I, th I see a lot of those shirts over at the Nelson Drum Company in, uh, in Forks Drum Closet in Nashville. So I didn't know they were coming straight from Kevin. And you know, it's so funny. If you got me, you, and Kevin in a room and we all wore, wore black Vs, V-necks, uh -huh. we have the same haircut, it would oh, be yeah. hilarious. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we're all really good looking, too. <laughs> it's totally right, Jim. <laughs> Jim, where's the sound effect or something? A good, give yeah, a good looking on. sound effect? Wah, wah. Uh, okay. Hold on. Hold on. Yes, I do. Uh, it's like when Howard started wow. out. He had a, the chicken and the the, the the splash symbol and the wow, the horn. Okay, good? yeah, Come Jim. On, people. <laughs> I like it. Well, Jim, that works. Okay, I keep interrupting Stuart. <laughs> no, it's all good. <laughs> We're having fun, right? We, we are, are having cheering. Fun. This should be fun. So Tim McIntyre, I remember meeting him at our, our LA drum camp. That was fun. Great uh, Gordon Campbell's another one. Gordon, Gordon Campbell. So, I mean, he's a heavy. He teaches a gospel class. He's doing mm -hmm. a build, an online build, just like he's going through the same thing you're going through right now with the training for the LMS. And he's doing our drum performance three. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, man. Uh, Jean-Luc Palmieri, another great. Uh, he does our uh, advanced uh, Latin class. And he does performance four. Uh, we got John Regeowitz, Scott Wittenberg. There's nice. just so many great. Dave Salinas, just That's amazing, right. great faculty. And I will say, and you know, maybe it was similar to you at North Texas. And you know, I always say uh, all schools are great, all music schools, all music educators. They all have great programs, and it's what's right. For the, the you know what where the fit is for for someone that's shopping for a school and education it's a big it's a big decision and all that um, but we have usually about 20 instructors every quarter yeah. and you know when I went to University of Miami I learned a ton and it was great but the one thing I didn't really under like wasn't really aware of I was probably just a little naive but I didn't study with like the main drum set guy, Steve Rucker, who's a phenomenal drummer and great. He's still person. there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's amazing. But it took me it was now it was a four year program. I didn't get to study with him uh, privately until the my last two years. I had teaching assistants. Sure. Uh, not well, like grad students who were great. Rick Craig and I, I got to study with the incredible uh steve bagby uh you know so I, yeah. I learned a lot and i was so lucky to learn from that guy but you know i and I, you know I, I didn't really have a lot to say in it um at mi you can pick who you want to study with so if one quarter you want to really get down with your technique and uh and study with jeff bowders get your hands and your feet and your jeff, you know yeah. your posture together and all that and, and really get creative and then maybe the next quarter you're studying with t-mac on playing some jazz you know so you can really break it up and there's a lot of freedom for stu students to customize their education yeah yeah because you know when i was at uh, texas tech it was just it was alan shin and a teaching assistant and then i got to north texas and it was um and uh ed Sof, henry oxtel and uh robert Chatroma. so you have those you know there's three right there maybe there was a fourth uh ron fink ron fink was mm -hmm. fantastic but yeah 20 instructors that's incredible and now you have different programs there's a there's a certificate there's a two-year program is there a four-year program I'll break it down. So yeah. we have uh, like we go in a quarter system. We're not semester. So quarters, ten weeks of classes, one week of testing. So that's eleven weeks, and then two weeks off. So a thirteen-week cycle that goes 
you know, we do winter, spring, summer, fall. We're in the middle of the fall quarter. Winter starts January 4th. So we just never, you know, you can kind of start whenever you want, which is kind of nice. It's great. Um, and what was that? What were you asking? Let's see, there's oh, the a program. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we start that, you know, we do small programs called like Summer Shot. And we have things like MI Academy, uh, where Summer Shot's like a one week thing at 13 and up. Uh, MI Academy is something new we're starting uh, in January where it's uh, five Saturdays in a row. Uh, it's only like three or four hours and a very spe like specialized little programs you could do, industry, business, performance, instrument specific, and all that. And then we graduate up into what we call MI Select, which is a one-quarter program uh, where people are kind of a la carte. Maybe it's someone that's an advanced player already, can read music, can play, but they just want to get some lessons and play with some people. They're in a position in their life to like finally do this. You know, maybe they couldn't they couldn't do it when they were younger uh, and they're older now, and they have the resources to squeeze in like a, a three months of intense yeah. study at MI. Uh, then we have, yeah, you mentioned our certificate program. That's one quarter. So one, I mean, sorry, four quarters, one year, uh, 60 credits. Uh, and then you next go to the associates program, which is a year and a half. It's the, the first four quarters mirror the certificate program. But then the last two quarters, quarters five and six, you got your like recording classes, advanced jazz, gospel, Latin. That, and that's where we get into what I was referring to earlier, our professional development classes, music business basics, independent artist marketing, visual media, like website building, things wow. like that. And then we have a full bachelor program. So we don't really have a two-year program. Uh, although the certificate and associates, you can also tack on six month uh, certificate for audio engineering or music business. So you can go deeper down the rabbit hole on that stuff because the students are learning some of that stuff, but they can they can really get certified like Pro Tools certified and all that. And I uh, have, yeah. a lot of drummers do the associates and audio engineering uh, uh, combo. That's really smart because as as uh, major you know studios are closing, um, you know everyone's going to have to take their bedroom, float the floor, put the Oral X on the wall, buy the laptop, <laughs> buy the microphones, and go into business to to be a recording musician. I mean, let's hope that some of these, I still haven't recorded. I did, I've recorded at Sunset Sound. I have not done Capital yet. I would love, it's on the bucket list. Capital Records, NRG, East West, hopefully before these suckers close down. The other day we were recording the, the, the background track for this, the CMA Awards that we did. And we were, of course, recording at this a place called Addiction Sound in Nashville. It's owned by Journey's keyboard player. And of course, beautiful drums, all mic'd, going through a beautiful SSL board. And I said, can I come in there and just hear playback? Because I just feel like it's going to start being a thing of the past where we get to hear our instrument going through a gorgeous board like that, you know? Yep. And we're lucky at school. We have a nice big studio. We have a bunch of big studios, but Studio A is that style studio. And I, when I bring people in there, I'm like, you don't see a lot of rooms like this anymore. They're all going away. Yeah. Which is a shame, you know. The Rich Redmond Show will be right back. Henry Ford once said that if you need a machine and don't buy it, then you will ultimately find that you have paid for it and don't have it. Nothing could be truer about energy-efficient LED lighting in your business. At Big Dot Lighting, we can show you how a portion of your savings from a commercial LED lighting upgrade will be paid for in hardly any time at all. Until then, you're paying for them anyway. Book a no-cost lighting energy assessment with Big Dot Lighting. At least 30% of your utility bill is waiting to be saved. Go to BigDotLighting.com. This is The Rich Redman Show. Now, Jim, if you had a little bit of extra time, Jim is a wonderful self-taught drummer. He he came up on, you know, Neil Peart. He had the big drum set. He was twirling his drumsticks, playing all over Connecticut. If you can find another a year, a free year, bud, to come to Southern California, you can you can get your, uh, you know, you can study all the stuff. There we go. I could. I could. Or you could What's just the, do it. What, I mean, what's what are we looking at price wise here? Well, yeah, I was going to say, how does it like because I always make a joke like the kids that go to Berkeley, they come out with a bill for a quarter million dollars and then they have to go play a $50 pizza job um, yeah, where the, where the yeah. sales practice comes in. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Uh, the tuition you can see published on the website. I'll leave it because <laughs> <it's, laughs> there's uh, online is different than on campus and, and scholarships. You know, but, but but I will say it's way less than Berkeley and, and yeah. Berkeley's worth it. Berkeley's, Berkeley's great, but it's definitely a fraction of the cost of Berkeley. So what I'll about, just, um, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. You have like scholarships and such. 
there are scholarships available. There's financial aid available. Yeah, uh, we do. Um, we have a Chuck Silverman uh, scholarship, and mm -hmm. we have e Evans helps us out. Dario helps us out with some uh, scholarships. Uh, Peisty, uh, we do one. Uh, we have our MI Foundation. We have a, I think a President's Award, and we do a. Um, <clears throat> uh, there's a few different ones. It kind of depends on the time of the year. Fall is usually when they're the most robust. So I'll nice. say that. Yeah. If I if I could just retire now, I have always said I would like to be in a Journey ACDC uh, tribute band, oh, or wow. uh, bon, Journey ACDC Bon Jovi tribute band. Hey, so, I saw on um, Journey DC. <laughs> Journey I think DC, is what it would be yeah. called Bon Journey DC. It doesn't really have a ring. You might want to keep working on that. But hold on, I. Hold I on. <laughs> yeah. let's, just, let's just put that out there. Okay? ACDC's got a new record out, guys, that is like right on brand. It's like chunking guitars, eighth notes, and there's not a 16th note in, in sight. And it's just tales of playing pool and drinking with your buddies and motorcycles. I love it. I'm kind of like it. your average country rec record, right? Yeah. Tailgates, corn Easy rows, dukes. Pretty pink toes on the dash. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, Jim, I know you're dying to get into this conversation here. You've got the you got the shield. You got your hammer. I love when you bring up the ideas of of like the 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 entrepreneur as a businessman. And because and if there's young kids listening out that listening out there that might want to go to a traditional college or they might end up at MI, just do yourself a favor and learn about just intellectual property, protecting yourself, how, how song publishing works and how to negotiate, uh, how, to negotiate how to potentially have uh, an entertainment lawyer somewhere on call. You know, they're usually $400 an hour, but you know, sometimes it's worth it just to protect yourself, have someone in your back pocket as a resource that you can go to. I remember one of your students that, and she studied with me here and there, um, Marissa Testa, you remember her? Absolutely, yeah. She got the job touring with uh, Corey Feldman, and Corey Feldman had this all-girl band, and she was asking me questions like, well, it's paying this, and do you think that's good? And I'm not going to have my own. I got to share a hotel room, and we're going to be in a van. And I'm like, hey, this is what it is. This is You're in a situation where that thing is going to look good on your resume. You're building your resume, so just suck it up, whatever you got to go do, and go do it. You know. But uh, you know, maybe she could have negotiated for a little bit more money or whatever, so she's out there just in the trenches learning. And, and you find that the students typically are resistant to the, that kind of uh, – rugged living that is necessary no, um that, i don't think so I, I no i mean I, it's all across the board we get so many types of students and i know some of them come in the younger ones come in and they're still you know we're all fans of drums obviously we right. all love drums but when you decide to study it and make it like you know they they all say this to me i say what are your goals they all say i want to make a living playing the drums and the next thing i say is well how you know, like you need to visualize that. It's not just a fantasy anymore. You got to put the fantasy away and get to work, you know, and you got to stop kind of just being fanboy about drums, you know, and you got to go like, you know, great lesson I learned my first day on campus, University of Miami, Steve Rucker goes around the room to all of us young kids who think we're the shit, you know. <clears throat> And he says, uh, who's your favorite drummer? And we all, we're all going, Weckl, Vinny, Omar Hakim. You know, this is 1987. You know, <laughs> we're all, you know, all these people. And he went, okay, well, you know, when you graduate, that's your competition. Huh? Oh, nice. What? Mm -hmm. And I love using Realization. that. It's like, here's the reality. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That is great. I'm going to steal that. It's excellent because it puts it, you know, and um, you know, nobody Mark, thinks of it like a, like a business. Yeah, yeah. They it's are like, their and, own business. And you got to stop. Like, I know that's scary to hear, but you, ha you have to do this. And like, back to like the level of kind of work. <clears throat> I mean, I think that Marissa had to do that gig. You have to take that gig. You said you wanted to make a living playing the drums. We didn't say what kind of living, you know. So you're in a van right now. You're bopping around, but it's got to it's gotta start somewhere. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, you, that's also identifying what kind of a living you're talking about here. Is it 30000 40000 50000 a year? I that's mean, the, that's those are the other qualifying questions and nailing down that funnel of goal setting. I'm going to pull back then, the curtain for some of these young kids. I'm going to tell you this right now, and you guys will all agree with me. Um, if you move to, say, like a city like Dallas, Texas, and there's a robust music scene, robust is the word of the day, and you're playing on you're playing 
big charismatic church gigs on Wednesday and Sunday because they pay their musicians because the musicians have got to be, you know what I mean? Like, you know, the guy speaking in tongues and I did that whole thing. Right. And then on Mondays and Tuesdays, you're playing in big bands and you're playing smooth jazz. And then you're also in this cool corporate band that might do day functions. And then you're in a, the best top 40 band in town. You're playing Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. And then you're teaching in this public schools and you're teaching privately. You're looking at 30 K. And you're killing yourself to do that, right? Then maybe you move to LA, New York, Nashville, and you want to get into a band where you're humping the road and you, maybe you're bringing some other studio drummers, drum parts to life and you're a side man. I think there's a threshold there um, at the lowest of six figures, but you know, but you're there, right? You get into that. And then there's then then the only other option really is to be a full-fledged member of a band, to be in the next police or the next U2, where you have all these democratic decisions and you have to get up at five in the morning and do the radio visits and then you have to do the meet and greet. A lot more responsibility, but then everything is being split up. Um, so those are your options right there. So you stay in small town, you go to the three major cities to swim with the sharks, or then you start your own band, one for all, all for one. That's you the music. Said one, at one point, Rich, that there is a place for anybody who wants to find a place in the music business. Sure. I mean, some people are, are, are not cut out for the... I, I love hearing these stories of, the, of some friends of mine that I was in North Texas with and they moved to LA and they're like, God, I toured with such and such for the first year and a half and I just realized I did not like living out of a suitcase. Mm -hmm. And then you got a guy like me and my suitcase has been packed for 21 years. <laughs> And it's just in the corner calling to me, you know, and then, and then Stu, you know, you're playing, you're kind of locked up in some of the live playing you were doing in LA with these like really awesome party bands. And I even asked you about it. I was like, Hey, if I'm not, if I'm out in LA enjoying the sun, I might as well go play with some of these bands. What's that yeah. scene like? It's like, how does that work? That's a great scene. You know, there's a lot of people that do, uh, even from out of town, come to uh, California to have a wedding or a big corporate party. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And I work with uh, this one agency called West Coast Music and they're a phenomenal company and uh, they support their musicians and they care about the music and they care about uh, the clients. And it's a giant scene, you know, and the yeah. musicians, every single musician is amazing. Most of them are touring musicians that when they're not on the road, maybe they're picking up some of these, some of these gigs, you know, and people are not going to stop getting married. People are, corporations are going to keep having, uh, you know, galas and shindigs yeah. and things like that. <laughs> and, you know, so, and as you know, the thing about that is you just got to know a ton of tunes and be uh, super flexible with how people, you know, if someone wants to tempo differently or they, they like it a different way, you just have to be really open for that and, you know, uh, just be ready for anything, you know. Playing with tracks too, right, from your iPad? Some, sometimes tracks. I run tracks with my band. Uh, I work with another band where we literally, once the party's really going and we're really rocking, we don't, we don't, we don't, this guy doesn't use tracks at all, Corky James, no tracks. And he segues every single song. So, we'll so if you have to pee, you're 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 like you, you just, might as well just pee yourself because you're not going to stop, you know. So or just try to hold it, you know. It's crazy something. that that's become an issue in my life. It's like, uh, can I actually <laughs> make it through the night without getting up at four in the morning to pee? And I the answer not, is no. Yeah. Yeah, I will not be drinking this whole thing uh, before a set. I always make sure, and no matter what, like, yeah, if you're forty-five and older. Uh, uh, just always pee before you do anything. Before you always get the car, pee. You might not have to go, but just pee because you're probably going to pee and you're going to be, be, be glad about it, you know? Yeah, the rules of the road. Don't pass up a, a toilet or a hot shower or a hot Yeah, meal. yeah. It's all good, you know? It's not going to hurt. So your so. guys are good with me getting up for a second or... Uh, <laughs> whatever you got to do. <laughs> hey, I got to ask, when you have a kid coming in to the school for the first time, can you size them up within the first couple of days and say, yeah... You're you're gonna have to find something different. I mean, not not from a talent level, but from attitude and right. You know that kind of. And thing. do you tell them? You have to, right? You have to. You have to. It's not. Uh, you have to. Um, it's tough. I mean, we we accept a lot of students. We don't really have it. We have enough facility where we. The, I mean, I have a high cap on how many students, and that's why, like some of these schools, they only have the real estate for maybe ten drum students. You know, but I could I could handle a lot. You know, um, my thought is this: uh, 
I want to give everyone a chance. I mean, clearly, if you can't play, you're not getting into the school. But if you can play at that age, and yeah, Jim, you said it. It's you got to have it. You got to be together up here and be ready for the work. And I feel like the first quarter of the school is enough of a wake up call. If someone's gonna, it's gonna make or break them. You know, so I'll take a student that I'm a little iffy on, like a tweener there, and I trust our program and our teachers. And I think if this student can work hard, they're going to get up there, you know, and it, mm -hmm. it, you see a lot of wide eyes in the first two weeks of like, especially students that didn't come from any formal training and, you know, and they're overwhelmed, you know. Are, and, are they uh, typical? Do you have the teachers there that are, you know, the truth sayers? Because I remember in broadcasting school and I did go to broadcasting school. Oh, you, I didn't know that. Yeah. I How long was that? Like, How long was that, buddy? Oh, man, that was about four months. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So like a masseuse. It got, my, it got my foot in the door. Yeah. Uh, there was one teacher who laid it out on the line for us. They said, basically, look, if you don't want to move in this business, you might as well figure something else out because it's going to require you to move. Okay. Yep. To different cities. If you want to move up, you got to get experience in different uh, feathers in your cap for success and, you know, and, and accelerating your career. Like a newscaster. They move yeah, a lot. Yeah. You know, and it, and it was one of those things that just hit me sideways. I was going, oh man. But, you know, he really laid it on the line. And because of that, I took his word a lot more heavily than a lot of the other teachers. I mean, you know, the people that were selling us on the school were, so, you know, we're letting people who, you know, were, were mumbling in. So, I mean, it's like, you know, anybody can get in. <laughs> <laughs> they were happy right. to take our money. But I mean, right. it was one of those things that, you know, this guy just laid it on the line. Yeah. Do you find that you have those teachers there and how do they, how do the students perform under their tutelage? Uh, our teachers for the most part are pretty darn encouraging and nurturing, but they are real. So as an instructor, especially when you're uh, critiquing someone on the spot, there is yeah. a magic, uh, there is a brilliance to finding that balance of not devastating someone, you know, and then not just patting them on the back saying, yeah, you sound great. Cause they know that's <laughs> BS, you know, that they, they know that, you know, you got to give me something, what am I doing yeah. wrong? You know? Um, so they usually respond pretty good, but we have a very international group of students as well. So, uh, you do have to sort of learn. It takes me, yeah, maybe the first week or two to kind of feel out like this guy can handle what I'm going to say. This guy, I may have to you know, uh, softball a little bit, you know, cause I don't want to, you know, and it, there could be a language barrier or just a yeah. vernacular cultural barrier. He sounds mad at me. And it, you know, like I can come across, like, I'm like, ah, you got, you can do it. And they think, you know, maybe it's a kid from Japan and he just thinks I'm a guy from like, I do just yelling at him, you know, but yeah. I'm really just like trying to be encouraging. So you do have to kind of balance it. And I got to say the faculty are really good with that. And we're really good with communicating with one another about students that we're worried about. We're at, red flag a student, uh, you know, and think he's, this guy's not going to make it. This girl's struggling, you know, yeah. so it is, it is tough, you know, sure. uh, but, but, uh, that's what it's all about. Communicating, uh, reaching out to students, you know, um, Rich, you mentioned the learning management system. What's great about that is all the grades are in there. You take attendance. And if a student is, you know, let's say a student, this is very common, four weeks, five weeks, kicking butt, not missing a class, getting great grades. All of a sudden, something happened. They took a midterm. They failed. <sighs> Who knows what? And all of a sudden, I'm getting alerts and the student's getting alerts that they're not showing up to class. So that's our system of like, okay, because 10 weeks goes by fast. So we got to get you back on track. Got to keep the finger on the you know on the pulse of what's going on so i'll hit the student up like hey what's up what's going on and usually it's like oh no i was a sick or um i had a gig yeah that's always really good am i like, cool just get the work in you're fine but yeah. sometimes it is yeah man like i'm i'm second guessing i'm not sure about this so it's great because like let's talk and it's hard for an 18 19 year old to express themselves and say that and it's hard for them to say I'm struggling and I push them so hard. Like you have to tell us. And if you're in class and you're the one to raise your hand and say, can you repeat that? I don't get it. I tell them everyone in the class right now is glad you're asked that question. Cause they all, if you're thinking it, they're all thinking it. Nice. You know? So be the one to go, you know, don't be embarrassed to say, I don't get it. I was that guy. I was afraid. I am like, I don't want people to know. I don't know this. I'll just wait and figure it out. You know? And then you've got these holes in your learning, you know? So take yeah. advantage of the teachers, bleed it dry. You know, it is, it's not, cheap you know so yes you know make us work is what that, I that that that's i like the tough love thing like look at you guys spent a boatload of money on this 
I'm not here for my health. I want to share all of this harder knowledge and information with you. You want to do this? This is tough. Let's get to work. And they, but they know that you love them and you want them to succeed. But I, I don't want to be a pushover teacher. Like I want to push you. I remember this guy that I had in the sixth grade, Mr. White, God rest his soul. I remember gotcha. all these years of education, El Paso, Texas, ex-military guy. He had us on the yearbook staff. We were reading Time Magazine. I read a book this thick in the sixth grade, Clan of the Cave Bear, testing us constantly. He pushed us. And all the other teachers hated him because he set the bar so high and he took <laughs> no guff. And why is he one of the only teachers I can remember out of my entire education? He made, he made a dent. He did a good job, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, my daughter's teacher, Mr. Svelik. I imagine having that last name like that. Yeah. Uh, we went to parent-teacher night, and this guy just said, look, I'm not here to make little historians, okay, because he taught history. Uh, I'm here to get them to think and to learn practical uh, memorization techniques, studying habits, things that are going to help them down the road, and also to help push them outside their comfort zone when it comes to, uh, you know, he was really speaking my language because I asked about it. I said, are you okay with them arguing grades and stuff like that? He's like, I encourage it. Yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Dude, yep. beautiful. Love it. And, you know, my daughter, it was one of, the, one of her favorite teachers. And he says a lot of kids who, who were A, straight A students get into my class and all of a sudden they're getting C's and they just don't understand why. Because his, I, I, he says, I would rather work. I would, he says, the, people, the kids who got all the straight A's, I would, I would actually hire the kid who was getting C's and B's who strive to get the A's. He says, that's the kind of person I would rather hire. And I'm going, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah, you have to overcome adversity. For sure. And that's know. what it's all about. You know, yeah. it's, uh, you know our students are off, often, uh, you guys mentioned, uh, Jim, when you mentioned the, the car sales and like, uh, it's never going to be, you know, it's, it's always going to be something, you know, uh, a lot of students come to us all the time. Rich, I'm sure you get this a lot. You know, uh, they've been at school for a few weeks and they're getting overwhelmed. I'm, I'm referring to a student that doesn't have a lot of formal training and not a lot of, uh, organization skills. Yeah. And they're just like, ah, uh, and I, I love to, I, it's taken years to figure this out, but now I love telling them cause they want to try to figure out how to practice perfectly. And like, mm -hmm. it's all going to be in neat little boxes and, and they, cause they get overwhelmed. Like, well, I have so much stuff to work on. I can't, I can't do it. Blah, blah, blah. And I tell them, put the Xbox away, log out of Facebook or whatever, Twitch or Twitter and uh, Instagram and all that and just get down to work. But I love telling them now and it's so liberating to say, it's always going to be kind of messy. You know, you're always going to have a list and a growing list of the things you're not good at, yeah. you know, and we all have it. I still have things I need to work on. And, but I also tell them while you practice, maybe the last 15 minutes, play some stuff that you know you can kill. You know, yeah. so you remember, like, I can do this. But I'm just, I'm still a work in progress. I got this list here, but I got this, I got this little list here of stuff I'm good at. And eventually one of these will move over to the plus column, you know, yeah. but, but I love telling them like, it's just, we all do, you just, it's going to be a little chaotic and messy. Just get in there and do the work. Stop trying to perfect and talk about all this and just get hunker down and do the work, you know? Yeah. Even it. if you just want to be a great rock drummer, learning a bossa nova and a shuffle is definitely going to improve your musicianship. You'll be a better version of the rock drummer that you want to be. Absolutely, um, man. Absolutely. I don't want to ask a stupid question, but uh, what's a bossa nova? <laughs> You know, it's uh, when you're in the elevator. Well, got that, it. that would, well, if you want to learn the exact clave yeah, that a, pattern. That was a one bar pattern. You have to turn it yeah. into a two bar. No, that's Bo Diddley, which makes me think of, what was your Bo Diddley story? Oh, mine? Yeah. I have a great Bo Diddley story. Because uh, Sandy Gennaro uh, actually was his band leader for some years. Really? Okay. Yeah. This was mid nineties. I was in a band called Ico Ico. We were like a rootsy rock cool band. They were an institution in Miami. Like they started in 1980. They've had different players and all that. Cool. And I, I got to be in the band. It was great. We, uh, we did a, 
We worked with Jimmy Buffett. We have a song. Uh, we did One Eye Purple People Eater with Jimmy Buffett for the movie Contact. And so if you ever see that movie Contact, that's me playing drums. And that's our band, you know. Really? Show so notes. That. That's going in the show notes for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One Eye Purple People Eater. Claim the fame, you know. Everyone's heard me play at least some triplets and. Uh, um, but uh, the Bo Diddley thing, so this band, Bo, Bo Comes to Town, this is, again, mid-90s, Miami, Stephen Talkhouse, great club on South Beach. And he hires us. We added a keyboard player uh, and our guitar player. We had two guitar players, the older guy, Larry Williams, who used to work out here uh, with James Harmon out in Long Beach all the time. Um, he was he just wanted to play maracas. His thing is like to play maracas with Bo Diddley is like the, the gig, you know, so yes. he was happy to do that. And I knew how to play a Bo Diddley beat, but I played it where, you know, uh, it's. Right. Yeah, you heard That's, it here first, guys. There's your pattern. And I would play the bass drum with those accents. Bump, 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 right? And hi hat, like on two and four or upbeats or whatever, however you're counting it. And Bo came in, he had his square guitar, he had these funny little drum, like, sonic pads, like, on his guitar, and he kind of, wow. like, they were really little, little, like, hexagons, like mini Simmons drums or something. And he said, uh, let me hear you play the beat. And I'm like, okay. And I played it proudly, and he was like, mm, he wasn't impressed. He was <laughs> like, Man, that's not it. I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> like, I got to play a show tonight with this guy, like, in yeah. a few hours. So he sits down, he's like 72 at the time, sits down, and what he, he played the same pattern, but he played the bass drum, boom, boom, boom. Boom, under the bump, bump, the bump, the bump. Nice, bump, that moves bump. it forward. Because the bass player, and you know, a lot of bands will play it like all the whole band's going bump, bump, the bump, the bump, bump, bump. But if a bass player is going boom, 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 under it, it has some, you know, there's a little bit of contrapuntal and something, something under that. 3-2 clave uh, Bo Diddley that he says he created, you know? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And then you Sandy, know, yeah. I think, played it up on the high tom so that Bo could come around and play the floor tom. Oh, that's awesome. And then there's also, like, there's the one that's like. I like love that these drums one. are super clear and beautifully dialed into your mix. Oh, yeah, baby. I got it down. See, we, we got to teach online. And normally the camera, you could see everything. But I moved it so where I'm not, like, looking, like, over here and I'm talking to you. So I Oh, you got it dialed, buddy. A little more. Yeah, well, I've I've had months to get it together, you know. So. <laughs> well, you see, I I I, sh I would be looking at the camera, but it's just too odd. I, I, I you're right here. That's why it looks like I'm not paying attention. I'm I'm toggling between my camera and and yeah. the and the uh, Mac. So there usually I have a camera up here, but it's not working. I don't know why. But, oh, you know. got it. Oh, wow. So did it happen? Did you pull it together for the night? I got you... it together. Yeah, it was yeah. fine. Uh, the funniest thing was, and so yeah, the whole point is like, don't tell me I can't play a Bo Diddley beat. Like I learned it from Bo Diddley. Okay, so just <laughs> let me, let's just establish that right. That now. should go let's... in the MI curriculum as learned, <laughs> as seen on TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the weird thing was he. We did two sets, big big club two hours long each set nonstop and who played the entire time you. me like the rest was banter to the audience and like i'm still going I, and he wanted me playing like a he wanted this like we we would play like one bo diddley type song then we would do like a before he accused me like a shuffle and then it was all this And like he wanted the sort of pseudo reggae-ish, and he wanted the keyboard player to play a lot of like a like a steel drum sound, like a lot of. Little... <laughs> and it was just it was it was interesting, was you know. It was nice. Those drums sound really good, man. It's, they're coming through the mix. For <laughs> I sure. mean, we've had drummers on the show where it wasn't dialed in. It was like. <laughs> it sounded no, like I, that. It's like. Watch when I play this. <laughs> <laughs> Did you enjoy that? No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Stu, this is one of our favorite parts of the show, and Jim is going to okay. cue it up. Okay. Okay. It's the random question, random question, random question of the day. I should probably pull up the random question. Here we go. Uh-oh. <laughs> Thanks for the warning, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I did. I pulled it up early on. Uh, nice. The random question, Stuart. Hmm. What can you not get right, no matter how many times you try? <laughs> hmm what can i not get right no matter and this is any subject we're talking anything i mean any married guy is gonna have an answer for this well oh. yeah i mean like just uh 
thinking I, I always have our planning wrong with m me and my wife you know like i i'm always like i have a plan of like this is how this is gonna go and we're gonna i'm gonna surprise her at this restaurant and we're gonna have a great night and she immediately like it's not like she doesn't like it but she already sees the problem with what i've set up you know so i can't really yeah. plan like a a perfect night you know what i mean it goes fine but i think i normally uh tend is to it like usually it's, it's it's best to check with her and say, is hey, that, I was going to do this. Is this cool? And she might go, you know, it would be better if we did this, this, this. Okay, good. Now I won't feel like I've, uh, you know, just completely. Usually that, done that conversation wrong. is prefaced with the question, is that what you want to do? <laughs> That's sure really what that? you want to do. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, Are you that, sure about that? <laughs> That's like when Rich uh, asks me, I'll get a new shirt. And he goes, is that a new shirt? <laughs> Yeah, it's nice. That means he doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, new shirt. Little inflection there. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh. Uh, Where'd you find you know that? Do, you go to Coles you know again? I, or, uh? Uh, I do, what I do wrong a lot is also um, almost all the time is when I show up to one of these like uh, corporate gigs at a, these fancy hotels, you know, and I went from having like my pickup truck to like having a nice BMW, you know, nice. to where it's like, now when I pull up, they're going to treat me nice. You know, they're not going to like give me a hard time with my beater pickup truck. Like I got a nice car. Still, I pull up, I'm the drummer, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and immediately you're just this, you know, and you're just, and, and you just can't really, and everything I do seems like from that point on, I'm just like. Yeah, not doing, not doing it right. But you throw in like a fiver or a tenner and you say, hey, can I pull up over there and go in through the front door or something? And they're like, yeah, man. I have done but the it, kill them with kindness and it does, you know, hey, how's the day going? Are you having a good day? And they're kind of taking it back, you know. So if you just warm them up a little bit, it does work. But yeah. at the end of the day, I'm still the guy that's like, can you hurry up and get your drums? I don't care what kind of car you're driving. Can you just, <laughs> are you, or can you be out of here soon? What kind <laughs> of Beamer do you drive? Yeah. Well, now I have uh, my wife's car because now that we're in COVID, uh, I'm driving her old 2006 uh, 325 CI. But I had a 2014, then I had a 2017, uh, the 535 GT, which was okay. a great car for a drummer because uh, it had a hatchback. The seats went down. It had a ton of room, but it was like driving like a rocket ship. So it was cool. Well, I mean, if, if you had gone Mercedes Benz, you probably would have gotten the respect you wanted. Maybe I don't know. I've had Mercedes too. I, I but Beamers definitely get. Yeah, people think Beamer drivers are uh, uh, terrible drivers, <laughs> terrible people, and all that. <laughs> I uh, I was running past this uh, tennis court yesterday, and there was like nothing but SUVs. It was like eight SUVs, and they were all Beamers, Mercedes, Lexuses, and Audis. And that's that's just the car culture of Southern California. I mean, it's an expectation yeah. for you to drive a good car. And, they uh, get, and there's so BMW many BMW Max. BMW backwards is wants Mercedes Benz. Oh yeah. Ah, ah, ah. Yes. I had an ML three fifty two thousand five. That was a tank. That was when they still built them on truck chassis, and yeah. it got and it got totaled unfortunately. So that was a great. That was. A but great you probably Mercedes. came out unscathed. I hope. I was totally fine. Yeah, I got T-boned yeah. and uh, totaled the car. But yeah, we were fine. I mean, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I missed that car. It was a great car. But, uh, I'm I'm gonna tell a joke about it's a it's a BMW joke. I'm not okay. it's not indicative of the of present company. Okay, so I'll just <laughs> preface it with that. So, uh, what is the difference between a BMW and a porcupine? Hmm, I don't know. Uh, and a BMW, the pricks are on the inside. Uh, <laughs> oh, guilty, guilty, totally guilty. <laughs> yeah, we stole that sample from Laugh USA on uh, Sirius. It's if you listen to that station, Laugh USA, it's that same kind of. <laughs> Yeah. You know what this oh, one that is? That sounds good. That's a good one. <laughs> That's Kelsey Grammer falling off of a stage. <laughs> oh, uh, good Lord. I love that. <laughs> good Lord. <laughs> Stu, it's so awesome to have you here, man. I know exactly where you are. You're like right next to your jacuzzi. It's yeah, it's just on the other side. Of, other uh, side of that I mean, wall. Man. Why do you know where his jacuzzi is? Have you been? Well, we've Chinese never we ha we've never gone in, but it's like when we have okay. our backyard barbecues, it's like so right we're there. in your jacuzzi. Yeah, hey, what's up? Ah, oh, next Steve? podcast. I think we got yes. our location. We definitely have our location. And the first <laughs> time I've thing. ever first time I ever ate bone marrow was with uh, Stu. We went to this place called Firefly on Ventura Boulevard, and it's like you know half of the um, daytime soap opera actresses were there eating bone marrow, and we I was like, what is 
this? And he, well, yeah, it was interesting. What's the deal? What's the deal? Yeah. We're oh my God! Friday, we're heading there Friday. You gonna go there for my birthday? Yeah, hey, me well, and uh, Allison and I. Yeah, that'd be great, man. Well, we're gonna have to do something posthumously, man. And I'll I'll send you some inappropriate texts on your birthday, man. Um, but we really appreciate you coming in, brother. Oh, what man. is it? Remind us one more time. Mi is addressed and how people can find you, even your socials. Oh gosh, okay. Uh, so my email uh, for work, uh, if you want to hear about MI or just say hi, uh, S T E W A R T and the letter J, Stuart J at MI dot edu. Uh, I'm on Facebook. Uh, my name's fairly unique, Stuart Gene, so you'll find me in there. Uh, I think it's Stuart Gene nine maybe. Uh, and I have a website too. You can find me there. You can message me there. I got some loops you can um, download from there. Little play along loops. Those are cool. What's yeah. the website? Stuart Jean at uh, StuartGene.com. Excuse yeah. me. StuartGene.com. I uh, had a graduate student uh, who's working with uh, Brian Fraser Moore and Adam Blackstone. He was a drum student, uh, but now he's like teching for them, uh, like lib- writing charts for the Mass, the Mass Singer TV show and all that. And he did my website, Antonio Geary, really successful graduate from MI. Yeah, man. And uh, yeah, I'm on the Facebook and I'm on the uh, the, the Instagram. Facebook. Yeah, yeah the, the, the Instagram. Grand. You know. All that good I stuff. I think it's time to revamp MySpace. I think that's going to make it. I think so. I'm down with that. You Somebody know. was trying to do it. I think, uh, yeah, Justin Timberlake was trying to do it. It did not stick. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Mm. It's well, crazy. If you can't do it, maybe I can. I even tried to fool around with uh, Twitch. You guys down with Twitch? I have not. I, I keep, every time someone mentions it, I go, I have to get on there. What is that all Twitch. about? Twitch. Was that video it's a, gaming? It's gaming, but now they do have like a performing arts kind of. Oh. section and um uh we have a student uh graduate he was uh he, he did the um what did he do the on the uh, mi select program simon sands uh swedish guy yeah um he uh he was getting he was doing his master's thesis on education and studied at mi for three months to to get some info and all that sure. he's a great player and he's all over twitch and it and he's playing drums but it looks like he's video gaming and people can i think donate and stuff like that so there's oh, like all this patreon action. yeah yeah so i i kind of i'm like i know i'll just go on twitch whenever i come out here and just shed and fool around and just i'll just let people watch me practice and that's smart you can probably to, you do know. some great stuff with like green screens for with twitch if you have that happening that's probably a yeah. you know what you i mean ticket talky TikTok. I don't I, do the TikTok. Neither do I, buddy. Yeah. Jim, Jim is, is, is he's lambasting me for not being on there, but I just, I don't know. I don't really do it. I just had a podcast episode today that I recorded with uh, a pizza, a family pizza place. And we were talking about another pizza place that does TikTok and they do it really well. Hmm. Like 20,000 followers well. Wow. That's great. Yeah. That's so really great. Just, and they do, you know, hey, here's us cutting the pizza. Hmm. Yeah. And they get so massive response. I don't know. We, we're, maybe we're overthinking this thing. You know, things require talent. We're like, yeah, it's, we have to have talent. But apparently well, you can just open <laughs> toys and become millionaires. Well, I mean, you, you have to have content, you know, yeah. and I yeah. tell students that all the time, like, get your content up there. Like, you know, back to this, like, here we are, like you said, the studios aren't necessarily hopefully they come back and all that but yeah everyone's got to have some kind of setup at home and why not be posting stuff i mean I'm, i i've been a little uh, idle lately but i need to get back on it and like just do 30 second video one minute pop it up there maybe someone sees it you know um yeah. I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm going to use this platform for uh just a little uh, one little self promotion thing do it i uh, want that we want that I just want All the right. World thanks, to know. Stuart, for I'm being on. We'll check it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the closing music. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. we we encourage it. No, I'm just gonna say this. I'm I'm kind of goofing here, but uh, you guys tip to Brandy Carlisle. Yeah, of course. Songwriter. Yeah. I'm just gonna say, and I don't want to take her drummer's gig, but if he ever like doesn't want to do that gig anymore, I'm just putting it out there, like. I would love to do that gig. You know, I think who <laughs> so, played with her uh, at one what's point. What's the harm in, in, in what's the harm in throwing it out there? I you think know? Dax from Cheap Trick played with her at one time. If you know Dax, wow. but you know everything is not, it, it's not six degrees of Kevin Bacon anymore. It's one degree of anyone. So yeah, I, I'm throwing it out there. She is great. I saw her at the Troubadour, and but she didn't have a band. It was just her playing acoustic. It was <sighs> awesome. 
She doesn't need a band. Wow. She's insane. She's so good. She just gets better and better. I don't know if you heard her new group, The Highway Women, but it sounds like a classic country. It reminds me of the trio record of Emmy Lou and Dolly and, and uh, Linda Ronstadt. I'm gonna have to get uh, hip to that, man. It's really good and like the drumming on it. I mean, it sounds like Larry London. I don't I haven't looked at who's playing yeah, on it. Yeah, we'll find that, out who it is. It, it could it be a like classic. It sounds great. It's it could really be like good. a hip mm-hmm. Nashville guy like Near Z. Or Jerry Rowe, or it could be a West Coast guy like Aaron Sterling or um, Chamberlain that they flew yeah, he, into Nashville. Now, Matt's played on some of her on her band's records, yeah, yeah. Uh, earlier on. Uh, but yeah, I just I just thought I'd take the opportunity, you know. And, uh, well, that wasn't promotionally at all, man. <laughs> I think that if you really want the gig, you could probably get the gig. We could track it down you for it you. But again, no, I don't want. I'm not trying to take anyone's gig. Oh yeah, so yeah, I got that's you. Not cool. That's not. I got that's you. Unethical. But if it ever so happens, I ran yeah. into Paul McCartney once at Fryman Canyon, uh, riding a bicycle. I had no idea it was him. I was. Sw- barely breathing i was going uphill yeah and my friend was ahead of me this keyboard player matt matt angst and there was no one around it was like a tuesday afternoon like two in the afternoon and it was a, i heard someone say there's a shadow hanging over me like i heard a voice and i remember thinking that's a song that's a line from yesterday the beatles like why is someone saying that and then i came across this person and there was a young little girl and i looked at the little girl and waved hi and matt was farther up the road i didn't even look at the guy there was no one around and matt stops and he goes "Stu, man that's paul mccartney and i went no no it wasn't no it's not and i was scared to turn around i mean i'm like I, you gotta be kidding me i turned around and there he, it was paul mccartney man he had a he had a bodyguard but he was on his cell phone and i still trying to figure out why was he saying a line from yesterday like was he telling the teleprompter guy like it's a shadow hanging over me, you know, or is that yeah. his code? Like I got my, is that, it's, was that a code word? Like the, my daughter's funny. with me or Yeah. But anyway, I, just, and I, we waited for him to come up around the path. And I was going to go, dude, you ever need a drummer, man? I'm your guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he never came up the, our way, you know? So uh, you just never know, man. I was in Ryman know. and I ran into a Stewart, uh, route Stewart's uh, ex-wife, you know what I mean? It's, wow. just, it's crazy. Hey. You're like, hey. Oh, no, I was with uh, I was with Kara. But I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but she had a mutual friend, and so we all stopped for a chat. But speaking get with of the chats. Hero and get with the hero. Yeah, you're crazy. Yeah. Man, this was so, so fun. Jim, it's so I good just, to see I, you, man. I, I have a content idea that you guys yeah. could really oh, okay. capitalize on. Yeah, let's get it in. Chasing down celebrities like what you're talking about <laughs> and doing exactly that, asking for a gig. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> you know, and document it. I think that could be hilarious. Jim has another idea. He wants me to do things that I would never do, like um, uh, change my oil or mow my lawn, and then, <laughs> then, then use that as content. Yeah, shave your head, that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, Crazy. That would be kind Making of Making breakfast. You know, that'd be cool. Frying well, he, some eggs. Rich is actually a, not a bad cook. I, I know he's good. He's got that walk. Yeah. Oh, but I'm, <laughs> that is a whole story for some insiders. But <laughs> Stu, is, like, <laughs> if you look at like a, old pictures of Stu from maybe like two years ago or something, he looks like a completely different person because this guy went totally paleo and just like bodybuilder diet and is got so lean. I can't even recognize you from those old photos, man. man. And you're on, you're on your Peloton kick every day, man. You look great. Thanks, man. Thanks. Well, you know, I, I comes and goes. COVID's been a little tough, you know, yeah. uh, to maintain everything. But yeah, I'm really glad I got the Peloton and the home gym because the gyms are shut down. And even when they open up, it still might be a little uh, petri dish germy. Yeah. So you guys got to get out of California. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, just, I don't want this thing, man. No. But I, but I guess I, we will yeah. all Every need time to I get talk it at to some you, point. I feel I feel like I'm abnormal. I've, I've like I've just gone on with life. As, in well, general. no, I I understand because your your job is really you know you're indoors most of the time, anyways, right? No, I'm out I'm out meeting people, shaking hands, hugging everything. I don't know how you're doing that, man. I just do. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> wow. There, yeah. It's yeah. called swimming in the Hudson River. I know. I'm just not quite yeah. there. I'm just not quite there yet. Well, the vaccine know. news is looking good, so. Yeah, yeah, maybe I'm, maybe I'm out on that. Too. Yeah, but speaking <laughs> of Twitch, we'll have all these side effects from you, you never know. But it's, I think it, <laughs> you I, guys first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Think, see, see the first six months, see what happens to people. Yeah. You know, hey, I got a novel. Like, I a third arm. <laughs> yeah, but, you yeah. know, hey, uh, I can play the drums better. 
I've, I've always got a third, a third arm. arm. <laughs> I've always got a third arm. Hey, I've got Jim. I've got a unique idea. We've never done this yet, but but oh, uh, we could since the drums are so dialed in, we could have we could we could close the show with Stu playing this amazing Bo Diddley beat with with some slight variations or any other yes. kind of thing that he wants. But I and just want to. Uh, I just want to thank everybody out there for the support. We're coming up on a hundred episodes in the can of this. We wow. love it. And if you guys have got comments or praise, I've got an email address for you, the rich Redmond show at gmail.com. Jim, as always, thank you for your time and tell it. Stu, so nice to spend this time with you, man. Happy early birthday. And we're going to end the show with Stu Jean playing some Bo Diddley. All right, yeah. here we go. And guys, thank you so much for having me. And yeah, I'll, I'll play you out. Rich, I'll see you soon. Jim, great to meet you. Thanks for everything. You're awesome. And uh, yeah, okay, here we go. Rich. Thanks, dude. has been the rich redmond show subscribe rate and follow along at richredmond.com